Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back, folks, to a World of Tanks. And Goldmeister in Clan Heat, or H-E-A-T, as it were, in his Scorpion, the baby Scorpion, the American Scorpion. The uh, This is like the Eastern Scorpion. You know, the Eastern Scorpions aren't as poisonous, or maybe not even poisonous at all to humans, but the Western Scorpions, that's like the German sp Scorpion. Those are really poisonous, right? Is that, do I have that right? I think I've made that joke before. <laughs> I think I know that only because my mom got stung by a scorpion down in Florida and she thought she was going to end up dying but then realized once she talked to the doctor, this is you know when I was a young kid back in 1872 or so, and talked to the doctor and he said, no, they're not really that poisonous, you're just going to have a sore finger. But however, had it been a western scorpion, you might be in a little bit of distress. So this is the little tiny eastern scorpion, he's cute. <laughs> anyway, Goldmeister sent this to me and said, hey, how could I have won this? And that's always the... I'm getting a lot of those. And it's all manner of games. Terrible games, some good games that are close. But really, it boils down to your decisions. So right away, we got a kind of interesting thing happening. He comes up, and he's got a shot on the KB-1S if he goes and investigates it. Now he's got shots on the Tiger P. He starts using the Tiger P. I think I would have gone for the track there, bud go down a little lower you do run the risk of potentially hitting low and not doing any damage and I, I agree with that blind shot that was a nice job right there I would try to track him also if you move forward a little bit you might be able to spot some things right now you're sort of counting on other people spotting you're doing a good job though with bush mechanics now let's go back while he continues to work on these guys down here and talk about the KB-1S which I mentioned earlier the answer, the general answer to how could I have won this is to make the right decisions at the right time. And I think, I think I would have been working on that KB-1S. Your M4 is keeping him spotted. And he's busy shooting the M4. And you know that because your M4 just died. <laughs> but that's been going on for a while now. And there's been no reaction from Goldmeister. I would have turned and attempted to take out that 1S while you and the M4 were working on him together. You would have to be careful about backing up and getting shot in the side from down here, which may be one of the reasons you didn't go after the 1S. I say that because one of the things about using a sniper spot like this is clearing out your ability to work around, in and around it. And if there's something that's threatening you, i.e. the KB-1S, it's probably a good idea to get rid of him. And all of a sudden now we've got some more dudes down here. Your Sturv thinks about it, and over he goes to start working on them. And then you finally move but you make a very bad decision driving way out in the open before your gun is even online and you take a big hit. And now you're trying to back up and your ammo wrecked. I would have got my gun online, creeped forward just a little bit and looked to sneak a shot into the KB-1S without being spotted, but you really just sort of drive around and highlight yourself. So watch out for that. That's something to work on as far as minimizing your exposure, right? I think you can probably, if you came around there very further back anyway, back over here, and just crept around with your gun pointing in the right direction, you might have been able to either do it unspotted or just enough of your gun showing you get the shot and back up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we sort of ignore that the KB or the yeah, KB1S and the T25 too are still sitting down there. And they're just looking for an opportunity to come up and clear you guys off, and your team is in bad shape. So we're just sort of ignoring that that's happening. The other thing you're doing here, which was interesting, for a long time you were doing a nice job staying back in the bush and now you're right up inside it now the good news is there's probably not a tank that can spot you down in there probably not you don't know that there's a lot of enemy tanks left and not many of you so I would watch out for being right in the bush and shooting but you're making that calculated decision I'm assuming now the Sturve's like well what's going on over here and he does a nice job taking out the 1S that was very important and then here comes the 25-2 Again, I think had you worked on them a little earlier, they may not have been this issue, where now the the Sturve is feeling like he has to go after this 25-2. Now the 25-2 is in danger of proxy lighting you, and you lose the Sturve 7-4 because we really ignored a threat on our flank right there. And it's at this point it's carry pants time, and we're going to see if we can we can fix this. Now <laughs> it was interesting to me that you're carrying two repair kits in a casemate TD. I think that might be a viable thing to do. In this tank, I, I don't know. I probably would either be carrying food or a fire extinguisher. Probably food if you think you're going to be unspotted most of the game and just improve. Now, this was very dangerous. You came up, again, your gun not really online, showing that very slow turret swing. 
gunswing of the Scorpion, but you do a nice job taking out the T25 slash two as he comes up. And he's not, he's actually looking to the right, trying to find you in those bushes and you weren't there because you were back around the corner. We get unlucky here, unfortunately. We miss him once. Don't get spotted, thank goodness. Kind of surprised, but he is, maybe he just has bad crew. We auto aim, we come off the auto aim, we fire, we go slightly right and we bounce it. Oh, that's just painful. Trying to get away with it here. This Cromwell's just charging in. Decent depression, and we finally get rid of the Cromwell. Very helpful at that point. Be careful about moving straight back in. Now we've got a light tank that somehow you've spotted backing up. Auto aim him, down he goes. And we hang out right here. I think I might have gone around the rock. I'd be worried about guys shooting. Me. Yeah, that right there. Shooting me from that direction. True, there may have been someone following him up if you went that way, but I don't know necessarily. That that's a that's a tough one. Let me auto-aim this guy. I don't know why we didn't just zoom in. The auto-aim was a bit lazy. The Tiger P is actually lit too. Nice job putting a shot on him. Thank goodness he didn't get spotted. Most of what's left, other than the Panther, doesn't have great view range. And he stops here. He just fires into a bush, and that is the end of him. Nicely done there. We're looking for this shot. And unfortunately, we low roll, right? 213. Isn't this a 240 gun? That is just really unfortunate. <laughs> Holy cow. And we leave the Tiger P on eight hit points. Eight hit points. And that is a bummer. All right. So we got to this point. Nicely done. We got four kills. We got 1,300 damage. A couple mistakes were made. I thought you prioritized a little bit wrong early on. However, we're still alive. And we're trying to figure out how to win this game. What's really dangerous? Man, the Panther... If he comes up, he's got, I don't know how many hit points he has, but he's got mobility. The RBFM has some mobility. The HT and the Tiger P are relatively slow. I think what I would have done is bailed out of this spot and maybe headed over to this corner where I can isolate the threat a little better than up here. Yes, this has a great overwatch potential right here, but you can be attacked from three directions here. At least over in this corner, it's only two directions. The wild card is to go blazing down here and go up into this back corner over here. That's the wild card, but we're going to choose to sit, so let's see how that happens. HC number six pokes out and we don't quite get a shot. Looks like he actually took a blind shot into the bush, just hoping to hit you. Kind of sitting here waiting, waiting for something to do, and definitely look at your flanks like you're doing. That's exactly what I would do. Take a quick peek. It would be the Panther I'd be worried about, or potentially the RBFM. The RBFM will be able to gun you down in two, maybe three shots, depending on what his rolls are. The Tiger P and the HT number six will need a high roll to kill you in one. But he's two shots to you. Plus he's gonna out reload you, I believe, in seconds. So you'll you'll lose that duel if he has a, if he has sight of you. Now you can't really go right, right? You can't really go over there to the west. The HT number six will see you. There's no way you can go that direction. He takes a blind shot in there. He knows he's spotted. Clearly he has six cents. He's poking out, getting spotted, and then backing up. These are all little pieces of intel you can gather. Some of it you can use, some of, you, some of it you can't. I'd be zoomed in because I'd want to take that shot right there. Oh, yes. As he started moving, if I saw his little icon moving towards the edge there where he can see over, I would have immediately zoomed in and waited for him right about there and tried to poke one right onto his turret. You may even want to, you definitely want to back up a little bit as that happens. And it's a tricky shot. But you might get him. There you go, and you missed. And that's a bummer. And he misses you, but you get lit. And then, holy cow, as you back out, there's the RBFM. And I, I don't really understand this kind of charge action right here. I, I think you're trying to guard yourself from getting shot in the side. I would have just got to let's see, get this thing working here. I would have just got to this derelict or this derelict and at least make the shot harder. Yeah, you may have taken a shot from them over here. Maybe the Panthers out here, obviously. So either. Put yourself behind one of these derelict tanks and try to try to make that guy miss, or just charge him all the way down. But it is hard to circle because the turret on this thing's bad. The good news is that he does 144, leaves you 124, hits you again for 121, and leaves you hit points. And down you go. But there you, there it is. The Tiger P finally comes in, and that's why I think this was your best bet here to guard against these side shots and give you a chance to take out the RBFM. From there, once you get in the open and stop, then all these guys have easy shots to include this dude. The second option would have been just go at him, try to get by and spoil a shot, and maybe make these shots harder while you're moving. 
there you go. It wasn't going to be an easy one to, to come back on anyway, but you got five kills, 1,700 damage. A little mis bit of misprioritization at the mid... <laughs> I'll spit it out. Misprioritization at the beginning. A couple things in the middle where I would have done that slightly different. But in general, nice job using the bush and the position. It just You became very predictable, and it was going to be very hard for them to lose, really. Although they were giving it a good shot, weren't they? Coming at you one at a, th one at a time. Thanks for sending this in there, Goldmeister. I appreciate it, as always. Thanks for the support of the channel, and we will see you.